how do you use emotional value in business over economic value? Everyone knows it's there because you understand that you've got communal endeavour. That's the word, company, isn't it? We were talking about this before. So you're in a company, and what that means is it's a tribe of people with a communal endeavour. Well, that whole notion of company is is literally being remapped and pulled apart. And dis- you know, you've got teams across the world, some of them sitting in bed working. You've got to keep that sense that you are one group. And these, this is how we did it back around the fire. Was you know, I've caught a gazelle. I'll give you a leg. Next time you catch a pig, you give me. You know, it's that. Um, the emotional value to that is what creates the bond, not the economic value. I, th- I think if you if you fear it, you will never try. So you just got to think. Oh, so what you felt? Just crack on, do the next one. You, you haven't failed. You just found a way not to do something, um, and that's the way to look at it. Are people more altruistic than kind? On mass, and I think they are massively. That's been my experience, overwhelmingly so. And this is what this is the why for me is that this product needs to be out there because if you can see the people who choose to share their exchange with us, you know, the, their video message through testing, it's beautiful. You've got someone saying, Yeah, babe, you know, I know you've had a tough morning, love you, or happy birthday, da da da. And you've got families do, kind of doing that, and you know, you know, your technology is helping people join those dots and be together that is amazing that is amazing and we need loads more of that so that's the why for me it's seeing our product change the social fabric of gifting like seeing it that's how people are gifting yeah changing humanity for the better and seeing our product leading that race even if it then means you know other companies following our suit we're the, the number one company and then all the others are me too's that's what I would say is success, you know, standing at the till of Costa and seeing someone grabbing a coffee and then sending a video message back thinking, I did that. That's success for me, I think. Welcome to the County Business Talks podcast, powered by Picturebook Films. Here, we're going to be talking to entrepreneurs and business owners from across Sussex, delving into the mindsets of what makes them really tick. Okay, welcome to another episode of the County Business Talks podcast. Um, this week, I'm welcomed by two guests to the podcast. They are the co-founders of a tech startup present, who are, have recently appeared in Forbes magazine and were finalists in the FSB awards for best startup. They are on a mission to change the world one gift at a time. <laughs> Delighted to welcome Omid Moalimi and David Park to the podcast. Guys, welcome. How nice you doing? Nice Thank you, Sam. Yeah, thanks, mate. Awesome. Look, I've, I've actually used it yet, and it's absolutely awesome. I actually got some brownie points. My yep. missus had a little bit of a, a bad day, got a little coffee from me, not hey. going to lie. Done a little video with it as well. When Sending it was, smiles. Mate, it was, what we're doing. It was awesome. It was mm. awesome. And I've, 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 like I said, I've used it. It's brilliant. So, and I know we sort of met at, um, at the awards and had yeah. a bit of a chat about the journey and stuff and fascinating. So, look, great to have you guys on. Well, so, thank you for having us. Thanks, mate. And look, let's, um, as always, look, we're going to delve straight in. Um, just look, t- you both had like, sort of long careers in design and product design. Just tell me about the listeners a little bit about your background and journeys and, and how you sort of guys come together. Um, if I start, because that's sort of where it, it sort of crosses where I first met Dave. So my background, I've, I went into the accountancy route, um, the glamorous side of, of the world, um, <laughs> um, purely because it's something I sort of started young, because my father and brother have a local firm. Um, so I've been working in there since I was a kid, sort of, and going through that progression, but it was something I just didn't enjoy. You know, it took me a while to realise that I'm actually quite good at creative thinking as opposed to, you know, doing back returns and things like that yeah. so um, um, I was doing that early in my career uh, but that's where I met Dave so I'll let you yeah so I started off as a designer um, studied art college because I went through photography 3d and then went back to branding and graphics um, and but I always had a passion for music in parallel with that and basically music was everything and I thought I'd be a designer that went out partying as much as I possibly could yeah. but, uh, but weirdly those two worlds kind of merged I moved down to Brighton and the opportunity of uh, becoming a designer but the output being within the music industry was yeah. the way that I went uh, so we curated clubs did bookings had a record label you know, all of that wow. stuff needed graphics and early stage of websites started building websites for for the club brands and um, and everything digitized in the design space and the music industry at the same time, yeah, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I went through that whole digital transition 
and um, as it went through just kind of got more and more excited and interested in it and it just grew it eventually uh, started a small agency yeah. here in Brighton which was you know boutique but serviced some fairly big brands yeah. and um, along that journey you know needed a decent accountant so I met Om um, sort yeah. of at the photocopier looking <laughs> looking dejected <laughs> Living the dream. you know and they're brilliant accountants you know they took me under their wing they really did I didn't know you know I didn't know anything about the mechanics of business mm. um, so they really sorted me out uh, but it was clear from across the room that Om wasn't cut out for that <laughs> so yeah. when he went into graphic design as well sorry when he went into product design um, weirdly I got into a project and we needed a product designer on that project okay. and, uh, and I was like I know, and then just called on. And mm. since then, we've been working together for I guess it's about eight or nine years. Yeah. So I yeah I left the accountancy world and went into product design because that was just something that was quite easy to me. Yeah. So I thought, oh, let, let's get a degree in that, and then yeah, did a bit of work up in London for a couple of uh, years trying to understand how the design world works, how uh, consultancy can make money yeah. through that process. And then after two three years, um, yeah, started up my own consultancy mm. in Brighton, and then yeah, like Dave said. Dave came to me and said, oh, I'm working on a project that needs someone to design a product. Come do you on, know man. anyone? If not, you can do the job. No. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but no, so, yeah, we met up and had a coffee and we haven't sort of stopped, have we? No. So, actually, so, so I get, and look, from, uh, from an accountancy point of view, and I guess that family up and that, that foundation. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. ultimately, you know, I'm I'm not the greatest with numbers, but the, un, the understanding from a, running a business point of view, mm. and having those foundations, that can lend itself to every business because you've got to know the numbers to have it work. Massively, I think yeah. Sub- subconsciously, I picked up a lot about yeah. how business operate because yeah. um, you're looking at P and Ls every day. You're in- entering expenses and telling people, well, can't claim for that, but you yeah. can claim and try and work out how the mechanics of all businesses seem to work and they're all very fairly similar yeah. under the bonnet yeah, yeah. Um, and you could really get an idea of what businesses you know just looking at a screen what businesses are making money how they're making money you think well you know look at those zeros on that yeah, at least yeah. you know he's spending less in that company so it was, i think i just sort of had a good overall understanding of yeah. what businesses are how they operate um which then i just sort of like i said subconsciously took that into my running my own com- uh, consultancy yeah. um so yeah so I wasn't a failure at accountancy, so I would say that I did learn from it. Yeah, yeah if that yeah. makes sense. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I'm I always positive about every experience. It's never a bad I, one. It's just learnings. A hundred percent. I've done a talk recently exactly about that, just about right, failure yeah. and, mm. and what it looks like. But it's how we reframe that narrative in our head. What failure is? You have to. It yeah. is, it's just it is feedback, basically, okay. that, and uh, how we sort of learn from those. Learning okay. how to do it right. Yeah. Uh, if exactly. it's a process of learning how to get it right, yeah. then they're not failures, are they? Yeah. They're just iterations. Yeah. No. And, uh, mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess so. For obviously, for yourself being brought up with you, you obviously dad running his own business you've been around that sort of entrepreneur or, or yeah in the sh- or, you know environment I suppose so did you did, I guess both of did you always have that in your mindset that you you wanted to run your own business one day was that always the plan up for me I think so I think yeah my my granddad my brother my dad all very you know they, they've got their bread and butter money yeah um, but they've always been doing other business on the side to you know oh, okay, to yeah. increase so they've always had that and I think I've I've had that as well I've been working in yeah, different businesses through my mum and dad's yeah. <laughs> sort of side hustle, should we call them? <laughs> yeah. It was like ten, just yeah, like yeah, do sure. whatever I can. So I think I've j- that's just sort of ingrained in my DNA, and also I'm quite not argumentative, but but I'd, I'd always <laughs> question. Yeah, you know, I don't. Not that I can't do you be. Agree with that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Not that I can't be controlled, but I'd always question things with logic. Yeah, and I think yeah. that is just a part of you know both of us. Like, why is it done like that? What well, you know? Actually, we could do that better. And I think when you start to work, I've only been employed sort of twice, once with my family, but once with the boss, just yeah. to learn. But, and it wasn't that I didn't get on in those things. I just thought, well, I should be doing it this way. Yeah. And I think I just couldn't, I couldn't work for someone in, the, in, a, in that sort of thinking. And it's, you know, I, everyone could do, you know, work for who they want. But for me personally, I just always had this urge to do my own thing. Because yeah. um, I thought I had a lot to give to the world through design. Yeah. Um, and I wanted my sort of, you know, my design voice to be heard yeah. and sort of change things. Um, so yeah, I think for me, from an, an early age, that was always my my thing. I could always yeah, and yeah. I could I could make money as well. Sort of in, from the younger days, just doing little projects and things. I thought ah, do this, you get that. That's yeah, good. So yeah. I think yeah, from literally the playground days up to yeah. you know, 
early 20s, always trying different businesses and you know, some work, some failed. Yeah. Just that, yeah, I think that's sort of part of the DNA of an entrepreneur. I think you probably face the same. Mine was the other way around. You know, I, quite frankly, I couldn't <laughs> believe we were getting away with it. You know, <laughs> we moved down to Brighton and we were doing some big parties, some of them free, warehouse you know, parties out in the downs and all of that. And you think, we're just doing it because that's what we wanted to do. Yeah. But the fact it grew uh, and then out of that commercial opportunities came, that they weren't, I didn't see them as commercial opportunities. They were like, what, we could do that as well? We could, we, we could start our own label? Well, it's just my mind just kept getting blown and, and then... Mm-hmm through following you know what seemed obvious and an obvious other cool thing to do mm-hmm. i then realized that we needed a business to underpin that so i had to work quite hard to understand that stuff mm-hmm. which you know why my relationship with with his family has been so strong because they really did help me out in you know transitioning understanding that yeah from just somebody who's just got pure passion for that for the whole thing for mm-hmm. creativity both musical events and on the on a kind of um, music side, so yeah, and then underpinning that with a business to to enable that to succeed, yeah. p- creating platforms. You know, I could see how you could create a platform, yeah. but the mechanics of the business were just like yeah, steep learning curve. Yeah. But I obviously had it in me. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. You know. And it's strange, that, but like of your your family entrepreneur in any way or not nothing. They're like all tradesmen. Was, oh really? Yeah, they're all trades except for my dad, who was um, he's a tank commander in the. Oh in the army so Ah, I was born in Germany because we were stationed there for a bit so he was definitely an outlier in the family way Um, and I think I had that get up and go about me I just didn't want to stay in the the village it's like it was pretty restricting once I got to a teen and it's great that like just listening to that that I think because a lot of people I talk to on here as well ultimately part of being an entrepreneur and part of being creative and following ambitions, passions, whatever that looks like, is so much like, ultimately a lot of it, we're, we're winging it, aren't we? No, some of us, we don't know like exactly what that next thing is, but you've got to have that little bit of lack of fear to be able to just go, well, I'll just keep doing that. that that's working, and then yeah. you have a look at something else. Yeah. And yeah. It was really strange, actually, because I felt like we were, it wasn't just luck, you know. I met people in Cambridge, we shared a passion for music. Yeah. We all grew, you know, I moved from the little village I grew up in to the nearest town as soon as I could yeah. met some folk we all you know we all wanted to make some stuff happen so yeah. we started doing our own parties and it and then they moved down to Brighton and then I followed them along a, a probably a, about a year and a half later and by then they'd really established themselves here yeah. and Brighton's just one of those towns you come here and, you, and there's it's so free-spirited entrepreneurial and people yeah. really get behind you rather than trying to pull you down yeah. and there was also this acid house movement which was so full of love and making things happen for all the right reasons. You can motivate 800 people before <coughs> mobile phones to go and do something together because they really wanted to. And I, I keep coming back to that, like what could Acid House do for business? If you look at the ethics of Acid House, I mean, put the, the, the demonization of that scene to one side. Yeah. We can all look at it with a bit of retrospective view. Yeah. Highly organized, really motivated, yeah. changed a lot of things for the better. Yeah. a lot of things came out of that that were really positive yeah. and there's some of those ethics I think are woven into the things that me and Omid see as clear and obvious in our business like why would you start a feel good business like you know I just yeah. I went back to the why of those early days yeah. and I'm like if you can get the why right in this business and the why in this one's obvious it's so obvious it's yeah. like we're just spreading joy and love there's nothing you know yeah. there's nothing malevolent or underneath it that that what, that yeah. That really drives this. And I think, sort of just going back, it's sort of sidestep to that. What I've noticed on this project is we've met a lot of people that have been helping us on the journey through you know, running agencies and companies. Yeah. And a lot of them come from similar backgrounds to Dave, where they're, they're <laughs> yeah. from the clubbing scene or they ran yeah. clubs. Yeah, and they're all grown up now. And all, and all grown up and have to do like a, an adult job. Because <laughs> you can't be the. No, like, mate, literally, yeah. how many rooms have we been in? And they're like, all right, Dave. Yeah. No way. What yeah, are you these doing? These guys are running big agencies and doing, you know, great wow. business. But and we're uh, all sniggering in the corner, like, yeah. if only they knew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's clearly something from that sort of world, or the, like, based the organisation, the understanding of, mm. you know, the mechanics of the club world mm. to organise and bring those events and spread joy. They've now taken those skill sets and put them into, yeah, say, something that job. pays the bills. Yeah. yeah. Something yeah, that something you can do as you get older. Yeah, it's yeah. a young man's game, a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. But but what's great about that? And it, uh, something for 
taking out of that like the whole thing around the community like, like like you mentioned about moving to Brighton I'm exactly the same come down from Essex and you move to the and it's an amazing people want to help and support each other like you said it's a great uh, thing there but to think that you found that as well within that clubbing community and it, it, that, that's what I guess there's so much will link back to what you've what you're doing with with present as well yeah. I guess the, the the fact that like you said bringing joy and but but it's all about community isn't it it's it's community so and tribal, tribal there's, there's, yeah. a, there's a real tribal yeah. element to the app um, and it's part of describing that um, to business is quite tricky because mm. it's like um, how do businesses harness feel good altruism mm. and the tribal bonds between people when they're being dislocated as a company yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think companies don't really know how to catch that ball you know they're now pointing things like you know, happiness officers yeah, stuff yeah. like that they would probably be versed enough to understand what present could do yeah. to the bonds and fabric of the company's culture um, but most corporate dudes are like I know it means something but it's you know, it's a bit modern for them you can see their you can see their little temple start to pump yeah, when you talk yeah. about feelings in business you're like yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to try and bring that um, that vocabulary to business through just saying job well done I see you mate you know, thanks for that. And also making sure that no one walks into work and not no one realises that it's their birthday. Yeah, it's a little... Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a big birthday celebrator, so I keep my, my nut down. Yeah, you know, yeah. But finding out halfway through the day, someone goes, oh, I didn't know it was your birthday. You know, I'd probably go scarlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think for a business, even a small business, they should know those days. Yeah. Even if they need a little system like ours to help them do it, they they should know. They yeah, should know yeah. when, when the work anniversary comes up. Yeah. They should know what religious holidays you, you observe. Because yeah. these are really important days to you. And you only need a little bit of recognition and doff of the cap mm. now and again. And you feel that tribal but bond. That, but that, 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 it's that, for me, it's that, those little touches that go so far. Mm. And I think, I know we've talked a little bit offline about it, but about uh, how much people have started to look at that more so now mm. since COVID. Like you said, we've been, you know, beforehand, everyone's got to be in an office at a certain time and they're there and everyone, you're there because you're sort of forced to. And then all of a sudden we're completely separate. So companies now, so you hear it so much people talking about culture. I talk about it here all mm. the time about the power of having a strong company culture. But my understanding, obviously, what you guys are doing to help enhance that company culture by creating more of a tribe even if we are separated by we're not in the office anymore and we're all over the place to mm. trying to bring that community you know a community again together from a tribal people thing. work best be. together yeah, yeah that's essentially it the altruistic nature of us yeah. um and with the present for business platform that's what sort of enhances that within the company organization yeah. um just that little thank you or i see you well done makes it i think it's like 27 percent, i think on the um, efficiency of someone yeah. just by saying well done as opposed to he's your salary on a Friday <laughs> yeah let alone uh, loyalty retention yeah. Yeah. you know you've got performance but it's just a nice thing to do yeah. I mean come on these things cost nothing it's yeah. like it's a tiny little token that means so much so we go on quite a bit about EV so we're really trying to get our heads straight emotional how value. we communicate this yeah. emotional value how yeah. do you use emotional value in business yeah. over economic value everyone knows it's there because yeah. you understand that you've got communal endeavour that's the word, company, isn't it? We yeah, were talking about yeah, this yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're in a company, and what that means is it's a tribe of people with a communal endeavour. Well, that whole notion of company is is literally being remapped and pulled apart. And dis yeah. you know, you've got teams across the world. Some of them sitting in bed working. You've got to keep that sense that you are one group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. these, this is how we did it back around the fire. Was you know, I've caught a gazelle. I'll give you a leg. Next time you catch a pig, you give me, you know, it's that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the emotional value to that is what creates the bond, not the economic value. Oh, see, for me, that's such a powerful message. And I've, I've spoken a couple of times on here about, uh, about that, and people saying actually how, I think we maybe spoke about it a bit offline, about how, how companies or people are seen as successful and whether that is based on your financial, because that's the narrative yeah. out there still. You're a successful business if you've hit, hit this financial target. Whereas imagine being in a, living in a world where your, your success was based on the emotion, like we was measured by the emotional value mm, of and our goodwill. companies. The emotional and goodwill, value yeah. and goodwill. That yeah, you yeah. Make, yeah, well that's, 
that's obviously what we need to do. What, 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 a, what an amazing place to be, though. And that's where, surely, like, again, I go back to sort of COVID, how it sort of stopped everyone in our tracks. And we, like, so many people had to look at you know, what they was doing with their life or whatever that was looking like and, and going, I've got to make a change. And I think, and think companies looked at it in that way, potentially. And, and, and I'm, I guess it's, it's a movement, isn't it? That's mm. where we're at. We're in a movement at the moment. Like, it, yeah. and, I guess, and moving quickly. Yeah. It's all exacerbated by, I think, COVID. There'll be, I think they'll look back and there'll be pre and post yeah. that point in time. Yeah. And I think business leader, leaders are really struggling to see which what this pendulum swing means. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're all over that. Yeah. And I think it comes back to these values I talked about before, yeah. you know, from, from back in the music days. I know that sounds crazy because yeah, no. a lot of people are scared of that stuff, but it's true. Um, that was, it had all of those same heartfelt, genuine purposes and reasons, driving forces, and the output was amazing. Mm. Okay, so we kept a few old people up around the country, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, but, but, <laughs> but, um, but for those people who were there at that time, they literally had the best nights of their lives. Mm. And that's not, that's not a bad thing. Mm. I still hear you, when you meet people from those days, they still talk about a certain party. <laughs> yeah, still yeah, in a particular there. one. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, yeah. So it's, it's, it's yeah. But it's, I think it, what it goes into is like yeah. Those moments, those special moments that yeah. you can trigger uh, through things. It's, that's true. It, it's, it sticks in your memory. That's the things yeah. you remember, and that's how you create a bond. Like, they they made me feel like that back in the day. Yeah. I trust in my you know, and that's what we're trying to do with present. It's like giving a like a love currency between you know employer or person to yeah. person uh, through our tech. Is is what it's about. It's not just about sending a gift. It's about that love and connection. <clears throat> and we will say, like, it's a tool for the heart because it's yeah. my heart touching your heart through just, you know, a lovely little gesture. Um, and that power is limitless in what it can do between humans. Yeah. And that's what we're really trying to tap into and, and enhance the whole ritual of gift giving. Yeah. Um, to make it easy but not devalue it, mm. to actually mm. use the technology to amp up the emotional value. Because yeah. if you're just a, if all you do is gifting, and that's what we do, we just want to create the best gifting tools that we can imagine yeah. if that's all you do you can put so much you know fuzzy wuzzy feel good yeah. in the flows because you're not a banking app who are doing a bit of gifting on the side or you're not amazon that's about convenience and you know a huge array of a universe of choice yeah. we're trying to look at each of those pain points of gifting in both sectors both in the uh, enterprise and the consumer side yeah. and just making sure the technology caters for all of those those points and, and I guess like again back to that like again talking about sort of you know people and their and happiness levels and what that sort of looks like and ultimately like I said amount of people come on here and, and again I go back to Covid and what's happened in the last couple of years and people question certain things and how we look at what we're trying to achieve with our lives and you know so, so many people now are more looking at what, what, what I can give that up because I'm going to be I'm, I'm looking for happiness as opposed to hmm. this financial yeah. success of some kind yeah, yeah. at the end of the day you're creating that whereas obviously what you've created with that, that, that like you say it's that, those little moments and just creating happiness with people by going now you get that and especially with a, I love the tour of the, like, the video messaging mm. as well making that personal little touch thing. Mm. and that goes so far again back to the company side of things and from a business point of view like it's not but people are choosing to work in different places in different areas and and it's not they're not they're taking jobs not based on mm. how much i'm going to earn can i can i live a comfortable life? but you add that extra value by doing little things like that how far that will go is yeah, the total compensation of what people are looking for now as part of a role yeah. used to be you know monday to friday nine to five this is how much you get now there's so many other parts people are looking for yeah. um, and it's a very competitive market out there like businesses are offering you know uh, sort of wellness packages being, yeah, yeah. yeah the corporate gifting side now is obviously big which is why we're doing it uh, healthcare you know <laughs> holidays so everyone's looking for that oh and it's very difficult for companies to attract talent because yeah. there's so much other you know shiny things that people oh I can go there I can go there yeah. so um, just adding that little bit of extra just that um, you know not a massive cost but just yeah. to enable people to feel special in this company 
and it's the, the employer sees me mm. and doesn't just work me to the bone. Um, and that's what gifting does, and that's what we're, tr- what we're offering mm. to our customers and the so businesses. You, you've, you've got children, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've all got kids, right? Yeah, yeah. So we know from that position that we are in that family unit that what your kid wants more than anything is it's just your attention. Yeah, yeah. And that's what also what this is about. It's just mm. giving people that video connection from somebody who's important in the company. These gifts should be recognised in a way that you know there's gifting rituals around the world they're really important to those cultures like they're done they're observed in a very specific way yeah. and we've been reading up on loads of those yeah. and the common themes are, are obvious you know if if the, if the gift is just given you know with no care then it's devalued if you put the video message in and just put a little bit of time in there 20 seconds of your life yeah, yeah, yeah. means so much to people yeah. and that's when you get the goodwill back yeah. Yeah. um yeah, it's interesting. It is, it's something. It's something really look, for me. There's something really powerful in that. That them little tokens, and mm. that, especially from like I say, from a, you know, looking at a, just as a friend to a friend going and like mm. that popping up. I was, you know, mm. um, and that side of it. But certainly from that corporate mm. element, those little touch points are, are gold. Well, we're just being able to, you know, send one of your employees a coffee from Starbucks mm. and just say, look, here's a Starbucks. Thanks for doing that report. Take ten minutes out, you know, go and get yourself a coffee mm. on me. They go in, scan the QR code, get the coffee, come back to the office feeling, you know, a bit of a caffeine boost, but also a dopamine release from the message mm. and the care they've received. That's right, and it's also you've got the economic value, but you also mm. really what you're doing is you're giving someone some time as well. Yeah, yeah, you're giving yeah. them a moment and they attach that moment. Time. They're yeah. like they're, they're sitting there having their coffee and you know, you're mm. they know that that came from you. Mm. So you've kind of given them that moment, that little break. But interestingly, in, in all of that, there's also the brand element. Mm. So this is a big part that we're working out now is obviously we've got a marketplace of brands that you can choose from. Yeah. So we are driving people to the till of the brand. Yeah. And we're asking, you know, we're working out how to communicate to the brands what that means. Like yeah. You can brand a moment. If you use present and you, you know, start putting a really good gifting catalogue onto the platform. Yeah that's then given through association from mother to daughter, son to uncle, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your brand is, is going through into that, that kind of moment that these two people are sharing. You're kind of branding that moment. I know that sounds a little bit... No, no, but... But, yeah, but yeah, yeah. for the brands, this is also something that they're, you know... They're everyone can see this is opening up, but yeah, they just yeah. don't quite know how, how to, to... harness it. How to use it to its yeah. best, yeah, and that's... That's what we're really doing, yeah. and that's the, also the, the part of it that we're still feeling the edges out of. Yeah. But it's it's awesome. So yeah, yeah it really. And I think I mean, look, let's let, let's go back a little bit and talk about like s- s- obviously I'm even since starting uh, as a startup. There's some challenges along the way, I'm sure, for for, for, for this particular start. But even getting talk to me about the last you know couple of years with. Like with COVID and stuff, and just before that, and projects and, and bits and pieces, talk to me about some of the challenges and stuff that you guys have faced. So, um, so yeah, so sort of pre. So this is an idea that we've had for yeah, nearly ten years or so. Well, you, you've yeah. had. He, he's been banging on this about this one for ages. Yeah. 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 I have to admit, yeah. I was like, yeah. but the, the way it usually works, I'm I'm sort of very creative. I just come up with a hundred ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them rubbish. And then <laughs> a few of them that are good. I always ping over to Dave and say like, that's the idea. That's how humans are going to use it make happen and Dave's great with the commercial and the actual business planning of how that actually works yeah. um, so so this idea we've had on the back burner and we, we the timing wasn't quite right for it um, at the time due to technology and a few other things but we were also on our other project um, and as that sort of naturally came to a close sort of in timing with COVID it was like okay this is the perfect time now to do some yeah. development and, and see this one through now mm. um, so we were looking at it and thinking you know, if this is a if this is a gifting solution for when you can't be there face to face to to give someone the thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, how about this for an opportunity? COVID turns up, and instead of it being occasionally, that's everyone everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> We're yeah, like, yeah. we've got to move on this now, right yeah. now. So actually, it, I think it helped people realise this is quite how big what we were suggesting could be. Yeah. But the yeah, but the challenges around that was yeah, starting a new company right as a pandemic. Starts <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah. telling people, Can we have some money to see it through? <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> Which is yeah. kind of stupid um, <laughs> when you put it on paper. <laughs> but I think that's just in our nature. Like, we're quite tenacious. We've got a vision. We know what we want to do to achieve it. Um, and it was just, yeah, being able to create a, a robust business plan around that and those times to convince mm. people 
um, which is what we did. You know, so it wasn't easy. Uh, we got a, you know, a good you know, you're, you're, dragging you're, denning, you're, but your relation, like both of you, I guess, like that. Again, we, we, we sort of alluded to sort of failure and what that sort of looked like, but that that fear of failure, like mm. clearly, both of you have got a relationship with it. I, I guess yeah. that it doesn't. I, th- I, I think if you if you fear it, you will never try. Yeah, yeah. So you just got to think. So what if you fail? Yeah. Just crack on, do the next one. You you haven't failed. You just found a way not to do something, um, yeah. and that's the way to look at it. And if you I don't know, I've worked in a creative company before. My previous job, it was like, everyone has to invent something. And it's, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just as a side thing. Yeah. And if you ridiculed people because that idea was rubbish, they would never try again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've taken that forward. So no, every it doesn't matter how stupid or crazy an idea might be, it's an idea. And often the way it leads to the solution. Yeah. Um, and I think if you, you restrict people in, you know, always fearing failure, they, they'll just stick in their lane. Yeah. And you just, for me as a designer, you just won't progress humanity through you know, design solutions or creative thinking yeah. and bring new things to market because of that fear. Mm-hmm. Um, in one of his things he says all the time, he's like, I absolutely hate it when people say, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Because <laughs> if that were true, we'd be riding around on, like, on, on a horse still. He's like, it's absolutely, we're holding ourselves back. It is, and, and yeah. it, it's a funny, funny term, isn't it? Yeah. it it's the, the, the nature of design is to innovate and create new ways of doing stuff and enhancing even you know i think they said in 1900 everything that's ever been invented has been invented and you think well no no that's <laughs> yeah your what's it such a closed mindset is <laughs> if you look it at it it is yeah it also goes to show how innovative they were at that point mm. that they really felt like they had fully expressed yeah. what humanity could achieve yeah. because it was exploding so fast yeah. Yeah. Mm. little did they know yeah yeah. <laughs> well, I think, yeah other people's limitations aren't necessarily everyone else's yeah. and if somebody has a, an idea of doing something better let them go with it and yeah let the reins off mm. you just gonna i mean my thing was slightly different which was more about um, consciously removing my limitations that I set upon myself. Yeah. That's been my journey, really. A little kid from a small village, nice close-knit family, you know, yeah. not not very big horizons um, in that way. So to just start on this, this journey that I've been on and realise that actually it's probably as big as I can imagine it could be. Yeah. And if, you, if you're prepared to just go at it and take some knocks, you know, not only do you have a brilliant time trying yeah. but those limitations are literally put on upon you by yourself and I don't know what point that happens as a kid yeah. you know when, when, do, when do you believe that your limitations are that as far as you can see so that's what I've been breaking down and I still get it but you know you just think oh, come on I guess as, as, ki- as kids we, dream, like, we, we allow ourselves to dream more don't we so you go into that place and you can dream where I could do anything I'm going to you know, be on the moon or whatever you're going to do. You, get, you know, I want to be an astronaut. All them things, them dreams. And then, like you said, you get to a point where society <laughs> gets hold of us and you, you everything stops, does. But I, th- I think it's the, yeah, the, the the juvenile brain is so creative and it's always trying to learn. And you see, yeah. like I always say to my, like, if my kids are really doing something like touching mud or stuff like that, it's quite easy to say, don't jump in that puddle, don't do that. And what I'm actually doing is saying, it's killing their, their sort of, what happens if I jump in a puddle or once if I touch that or yeah. I'm literally taking all their skill sets they are now naturally <laughs> learning away from them yeah, yeah, and then you're moulding them into this non-creative thinker and I think there's an element of that that I experienced with school um, there's only you know certain ways to do stuff and my logical way of thinking was like well once we did it like that and the teachers would you know rebuttal me and say no it's done like that I'm like yeah but what about that mm-hmm. right detention do you know what, is that sort of thinking <laughs> And I, you know, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't think I ever failed school. I think school sort of failed my thought process and it never allowed me to create what I wanted to. So I think an element of that around society, yeah, sort of installs not a fear of failure, but it doesn't, it doesn't bring out the creativeness in all of us. Oh, completely. And I'm, I'm interested in to find out, like, your take on, like, the education system now, how you sort of feel about that and like with even with your kids and stuff and going mm. into education, what your thought, because I'm, I'm very similar. I think, like, it's not, not necessarily broken. I think that's a bit harsh, maybe. But I think it needs it, freshening up. It need, doesn't mm-hmm. need fresh. Yeah, like we, it it stops people from being creative because you've got to follow this strict curriculum. And then the, the world's moved on massively yeah. every like 15, 20 years. I mean, there's jobs my kids are going to be doing that don't exist yet. Yeah. But the school system is still teaching the same way of doing stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah so unless that changes with with a, AI and the mechanisation of jobs, what's yeah. going to happen? You know, these soft skills are what we need. 
So how do you teach people soft skills? Well, you certainly don't teach them that by making them take an individual exam where there's only one right answer. Yeah, yeah. Like you've heard this. There's been yeah. lots spoken about yeah, it recently. Yeah. It, the kids need to learn about money. Yeah. They need to learn how to collaborate. Yeah. They need to learn how to think uh, creatively as possible yeah. and how to apply that because that's the bit that you know the machines won't be able to do yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not a lot of point teaching them how to you know stack things up because that, that's it you sort of look at, I, bet, or I think again we spoke about it before but you talk about that you know build, collaborating building relationships or whatever that you, that, that's not a, it's not a GCSE isn't that? Is that, so, you go, <laughs> like, so but, don't uh, get uh, them to uh, take in, uh, exams on their own it, yeah, uh, yeah no. get, get them to get them to put organise themselves into teams yeah. and collaborate and come up with a collaborative score I mean that would be way better yeah. but it's, it's like it's, it's <coughs> some of the exams I took were sort of more memory based, yeah, yeah. Um, which I didn't really work well with. Yeah, yeah. Um, was when it's coursework and you're given the freedom to think and change, and yeah, that's where I sort of did a lot better. I think that's, that's a lot of it. It's like trying to condense a year's worth of learning into you know memorising what you can yeah. and regurgitating that memory in two hours or an hour session, which is high pressure for young children. Yeah, yeah. Um, doesn't necessarily determine. Smartness, are, or yeah, 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 I don't know what the yeah, how do something how clever someone is, yeah. or you how know, useful they'll be in society. Yeah. That's well, the yeah. thing, isn't it? Like, that's what you're trying to do. Because my GCC is, <laughs> I'll be honest, aren't <laughs> don't make me look like <laughs> I wouldn't employ me if I saw <laughs> hey, you and me both. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. My A level, one of them was an N, I think you said nearly passed, but not quite. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, just going back and seeing my GCSEs, I think it killed me at the time, it really yeah. crushed my confidence of what I'm. Um, what I'm capable of yeah. um, and it wasn't until I got to like 23, 24 I said no I've, I'm going to do this go back to uni do what I'm good at and yeah. what somebody should have nurtured me at school which they never did it was the yeah. only subject I was amazing at literally for like 10 years first in every year pretty much apart from one year yeah. 93 but we won't talk about that year um, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was, and no, not one teacher said you're really good at design and technology mm. you should follow this and it was like well I, you know, at that oh, yeah. tender age where I know nothing about nothing and even now don't know a lot about everything but <laughs> I know quite a bit about design I like to think and so to have the school system not see that through and I know that's not indicative to every teacher listening or whatever but oh, no. for me personally there's enough touch points with education and people to nurture me to be the best person I could be for society yeah. and I never had that experience it was you know I had to figure it out myself it's crazy isn't it because you look at oh, oh, my, my twins are seven now and uh, that they they they're still they're going into school at the minute they're, they're calling them quizzes but they're actually tests and you're like why, why are we still mm. going down this boot like mm. they're seven like, well, my daughter was like seemed a bit worried about it. I'm like well, you it's just a and I'm, well, it's a quiz like don't mm. and I can't I can't get my head around it like, yeah. think, but, but do, you, do you believe there needs to be some way of, of like grading children who are gifted at um, you know just within the education system but but to actually create another group for the other types of skills because it just seems that what they do is they use this one education system to grade them yeah. you get stuck in your pot yeah. and that basically is your trajectory yeah and the emphasis is put on top achievers rather than spotting what the others are good at yeah, yeah, yeah. because this was my story and you know I, it's just classic i just found it really difficult to read yeah. read out loud yeah. you know words would jumble a bit and i'd get really panicky and there was no support around that so i just got left behind a bit and then I got my first computer and I was like writing away yeah. like and it had spell check and it was the first time it's way you know way after way after school it must have been when I was at, at college and yeah. then I l was looking at the page and realized how much of the page was underlined in red <laughs> and I was like oh my god I literally don't know how to spell anything <laughs> so then I had I'd just go back and play that game with myself and just retype it until the red line went away yeah. rather than going to dictionary and then would remem mem memorize how each word actually looked because the whole concept of language made no sense to me. Yeah. And as I've grown up, I've realized that's because it's a bit German, a bit French, a bit Scandinavian, and hey presto, you've got English. <laughs> yeah. you know, then when you look at those languages and work out how certain words are spelled, it makes much more sense. Yeah. But yeah, I really, you know, if it wasn't for that, real, like that, for that tool for me to be able to teach myself, yeah. I still wouldn't be able to write a business plan or anything that you know, I could imagine. Because, uh, and then uh, again, it sort of all leads us back to this whole uh, emotional value that we're talking about, about about more about these soft skills as opposed to these academic ways of thinking. And I guess 
back to you know we'll bring it back to almost back, back to present and what we're sort of looking about but ultimately it's about that emotion that stuff that you're tapping into that people's emotions and and all what that looks like and it's not all the people's mindsets have got a shift from where we and this is well, I'll flip it back to the education system but uh, that is like and it's we're so ingrained in that's how things should be and it's not that's not mm. that we need to look at things from a broader scope and, and the same with even like you said from a company perspective companies mm. have been forced really to embrace technology mm. like you know how many people especially in professional services you're only working mm. because you're sitting in front of me from nine till five mm. and now oh actually you've been working from home and you'll be more productive yeah. and worked from eight till three or whatever so mm. we've been forced to embrace technology in certain ways so i guess then looking at what you bought to the market and gone look where this is this is a new way of doing things mm. and being innovative in that that sense mm. and looking at how do we embrace that and companies people as a whole as a society yeah. that we're i think yeah we, we sort of identify the pain points for the consumer the brands and mm. businesses mm. and our, we've created a solution around all those three sort of cohorts um in particular the business you know it's like you're disconnected you're working from home how do you keep motivation and touch points with your your staff that you're not seeing or you're seeing them once every week um it is yeah just those little touches of you know gestures mm. through gifting and it seems yeah. to work brilliantly and also another thing that we're solving is is what do you want? So, you know, we can we can start making through likes on products, but also through profiling, we can create over time a really, really good uh, gift list without you having to define it. So you know exactly what that person's into. And well, it's stuff just, like it would it. be a suggestion, yeah, 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 um, yeah. but it, it, it works in quite a clever way. Because often when you buy somebody else something, you know, you know, you know enough about them to make a guess, but yeah. you also buy them something that you would like for them. Yeah. So there's, you, you know, you are, you are, in some way profiling the kind of brands you like, and we can start working a lot of that stuff out and sorting it out so that in the end you'll be told what special day it is, whose special day it is, mm -hmm. and be able to get them something instantly that they like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, you know, that's a that's a big one to. This yeah. is one of the biggest challenges mm. I face with gifting. Is like, just, I just don't know. What do you, we come to Christmas and the, mm. and the missus goes, "What well, we got to get this amount of presents for this amount of people?" Mm. Yeah, and people hold what you to it. They're, they're <coughs> like, you know, they. If someone gets you something that's so far off the mark, you're equally, like, so pleased that someone's bothered to buy you anything. Yeah. But a, a little bit of you dies inside. That they, <laughs> that you think, <laughs> <laughs> really, is that what you think I want? And you're like, oh, it's great. You know, like we can. We can deal with that problem for everyone, <laughs> yeah. and that's a big one. I can't yeah. wait for that, my missus. I still dig around about that blue jumper she got me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Anyway, but um, oh, it's fascinating. Look, I'm, okay, I, I mentioned obviously previously we we've just done this thing with inside stories about like from County Business Club point of view, our, our story narrative. I found it fascinating. A lot of people know about the whole Simon Sinek and start with why, and we sort of alluded a little bit. So, so talk to me a little. I'm really keen to find out more about that and delve a little bit more into that why and what, like, you've, you both clearly so creative, innovative, and coming up. What what strikes me with your mindsets is about the whole, that, that quote, like, there's a problem, we're gonna find a solution. And that's ultimately the most successful entrepreneurs is what they, Mm. they do do so and you're certainly on that path so talk, talk to me a bit more about that about the why like for, for present um, so I suppose yeah so the two products we have is the consumer app yeah. so you can send your friends a gift um, but also we've built the business platform so yeah. you can for corporate gifting uh, we started with the consumer platform the app um, mainly because it was it came out of necessity how many times is it someone's birthday um, and you find out on Facebook that's that's to how that's how we find out it's people's birthdays nowadays mainly. Mm. Then you think, oh, I'll go on Google, go on Google, find H and M. Okay, find a gift. Now I've got to get it sent to me. Then I've, well, then or I could get it delivered to them, but I don't know their address. Uh, now I've got to go to W H Smiths, get wrapping paper. And then I've got to go take it to the post office. That's six steps, six different companies just to send somebody a gift. And people think, actually, you know what? It's face. I'm just going to write on the wall, happy birthday, mate. Every message is that, or you yeah. send them a text message. And it's just not good enough. I don't think gifting has been looked at properly around the consumer uh, focus. Um, with modern times. With modern times, <laughs> so post-smartphone era. 
yeah. which is, you know, since 2017, I think literally over 90% of people now have a smartphone since that time, whereas before it was something like 56. Yeah. So the technology didn't really work pre then, even though the iPhone's been out since 2007. And it was a case like, why hasn't gifting moved on? Like, you, I f you find out it's someone's birthday, right, I can't do a moon pig, because I, I had to send that like three days ago, plus I don't know their address. Yeah. Or I can go on Amazon, okay, they charge 3.95 for, you know, the gift wrapping, which nobody ever pays. Yeah. Um, and it's, I, again, I don't know their postage address, and it's gonna turn up tomorrow um, at the earliest. Yeah. It's just, nobody wants to get a gift after the event. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't really a way of doing that sort of sort of saying happy birthday, apart from a text message or social media, yeah. which are great tools, but they're not the tools for the job. Yeah. Um, and we just looked at it and said, this is you know ridiculous. Why isn't there a tool on your app uh, an app on your phone, the first page of your home, that <clears throat> does all your gifting requirements. Because we want to gift as a species. It's something we do. Yeah. We spend you know, most of November out in the rain at night after work <laughs> spending £50 pound on a pair of cufflinks. <laughs> that we, that person's just going to go, thank you, and then put in the drawer because nobody wears cufflinks. <laughs> but we put ourselves through those pain points. Yeah. So we stripped the whole thing from um, sort of a top-down view. What are the pain points for the sender and the receiver? And we just looked at that as a design exercise and figure those parts out. So, right. you know, like Dave was saying, it's when's their birthday? Okay, the app does that. It's got built in Canada, tells you when everyone's birthday is. Um, what do they want? Again, it's got curated gifts, um, suggested gifts for them. Um, so whichever gift, whether you send them a two pound cookie from Costa or like um, you know, a jumper from John Lewis, whatever you want, it's there. Yeah. Um, how do I send it? Okay, what's their address? We don't know. So what our tech does is all you've got to do is just send it via a text message through the phone. Yeah. So they will receive a text message with a link to their gift and then they go through a beautiful unwrapping experience. UX, with, you know, they use their finger to unwrap the gift, a bit of fanfare, and they can see your video message. Marketplace? Yeah, marketplace. So it's- It's, it's got marketplace of brands. It's so got, yeah, so got, They don't get that. Lots of people say, oh, I could do that. I could go on to Next and get a digital gift card and send it to them. Like, yeah, you could, but you have to set up an account with Next and then what you're gonna send everybody you know, a Next card. Mm. Like, that's not what you want. What you want is the high street in your phone <laughs> And to be able to get it there instantly. Mm. Hundreds of gifts in your pocket. That's that's the thing. So it is literally looking at all the pain points around gifting. And it is a real... So your real thing is the tool, isn't it? My so thing his is, yeah. real thing was the, the why was the tool. Yeah, it's yeah. like he hates having the wrong tool for the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's my point. Mine was more like <laughs> just being a hippie. I was just <laughs> like... And do you, know, do you know about the Rory thing? So like one of my all-time heroes, Rory Sutherland. He's yeah. absolutely amazing. If you, you, I'm sure loads of people know who he is. Yeah. Uh, loads of TED Talks and that. We just sent him an email, a uh, cold email, and I just said, Rory, we've built something I think you're going to love. I think that it demonstrates that people are more altruistic than kind than they are mean. Um, and I think that altruism could be one of the human behaviours that saves us from ourselves. What do you think? And he just got straight back to us. Interesting. So then I sent him the full blurb of you know what we're doing, downloaded the app, no, and now he gives us a little bit of his time. We chat to him about this stuff. Amazing. What he's really locked onto is how hard it is to buy something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be fixed. That's one aspect. The other part he understands is what the sort of spear that I threw to him was, are people more altruistic than kind mm -hmm. en masse? And I think they are, yeah. massively. That's been my experience, yeah. overwhelmingly so. And this is what this is the why for me, yeah. is that this product needs to be out there because if you can see the people who choose to share their exchange with us you know their the video message through testing it's beautiful mm. you've got someone saying yeah oh, babe you know i know you've had a tough morning love you or happy birthday da, 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 and you've got families do, kind of mm. doing that and you know you know your technology is helping people join those dots and be together that is amazing mm. that is amazing and we need loads more of that so that's the why for Especially me. Especially in these like really these, yeah, the last few years and what's going on in the world is really gets me out yeah, of bed. I think, um, timing wise, just for me listening to it and thinking exactly that, it's almost like tapping into that the kindness in humanity of what who we are. Was ultimately, like you said, we and facilitate it. Yeah, and just just be able to just, just let it flow because it's all there. Everyone wants to do it, mm -hmm. and at the moment it's difficult to do it. So as Om said, what people are doing is they're defaulting to the wrong tool, mm -hmm. and saying, "Oh, I've obviously forgotten your birthday." I'm just going to write a text. But we can do better than that. That's mm. exactly what we've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they want to do it. We've just 
made that bit possible. Mm. And but for us, the trick is to not make that look like a low ball of forgotten, and actually make it so good that people would that would be their preferred way of receiving a gift because yeah. it's so useful and you are so connected. Mm. You know the sustainability aspect alone. You know yeah, the fact yeah. that you don't have to go and wrapped get things paper. wrapped and posted and done and all that rubbish, and the flexibility it offers people. You know, it, I think in the end. Is my, this is what I want to do, is I want it to become the de facto number one way that the world wants to do this. Mm. That's, how, that's the ambition. I know that sounds a bit... Like, <laughs> so hey, people, uh, what, but it's, it's <laughs> a mate, it's um, what a brilliant... Because like you said, it's all about... You, it, it's all about getting back to that thing of innovation, changing, changing the mindset around what, what we do. We just automatically, comes Christmas, you go out, like you said, shops in the rain and you... Pick these things, and even then things started to change. You go, okay, I can get everything off Evans and come to me. Now I've still got to go and get the wrapping paper, and I'll mm. come and I'll wrap it up. So everything's moving along, and you, like you said, why can't it be that this is just the norm in the future? That mm. well, it what will. It looks like, and it yeah. will be that we just because I mm. love the way you do. You actually mm. scroll on the thing, and it yeah. unwraps, unwraps the yeah. uh, unwraps the present, and you yeah. get that. Because what we're trying to do is also yeah push the sustainability aspect so that people collect their gifts in their own time. time yeah, um, yeah. Because it's all about that dopamine release and that on the day. Mm-hmm. So you get the message, you see the gift you've received. And when you have it delivered or you collect it or consume it, it's up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, people are incorporating it into the daily lives. So like, a lot of our best sellers are the mini gifts under Fiverr. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, a slice of cake from Starbucks. Yeah. It's a great little thing. You know, it's three quid, yeah, which yeah. is rubbish present if I gave you three pound coins. Yeah. But we wrap it up in an emotional way with a video that you've, and a thoughtful way on their birthday with a video message. People love it. And then they're on their daily commute, they say, oh, it's my birthday, I'm going to get my slice of cake tea. Go and get it. Send a video message, you know, eating it, saying thank you so much. Here's my cake. Um, let's catch up soon. Um, that's what we're really trying to enhance in people's life. And this extension of us, this little this little tool that just yeah, connects us in a loving way, um, which is something we don't have. And it's crazy when everyone says, oh, surely that exists. Well, it does now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And why it doesn't, I don't know. Maybe it's a timing thing. Just yeah, maybe this is just our vision of it that's being really sort of popularised, and people are now, you know, backing. Yeah. Um, I anticipate quite a lot of competition. You know, I, I can see that coming. I, 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 I hadn't but it, it's going to be you just the thing that you need to step back and realise. Well, not nobody needs to do it. Mm-hmm. But the thing that I step back and realise when I look at this is that gifting is so huge. Mm-hmm. You know, and if there ends up being ten players. There's still such a such a huge thing, and and I'll see them at the top. You know, I'm down for some. Mm. You know, come on, someone bring out something else yeah, yeah. which we can spar with. Because right now, Isn't you know, we're, we're you know they'd be two years behind us as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as designers, I think that that's something we we thrive on. Like, you need to, like I say, if it's ain't broke, don't fix it. No, if somebody comes up with something, okay, right, how do we how do we beat them? Yeah. It's always looking at our. If I was going to compete with present what would I do differently? So in my mindset, I'm always thinking, right, I've got to take present down. And then that's how, how I sort of design new features. Um, <laughs> to think, and then Savage. we implement them. <laughs> but I think, but I think a, yeah. That's an amazing way of looking, because not, not many people's brains will work in that way. Right. But we'll look, I don't think, like people are mm. sports. But, but I think as entrepreneurs, I, I ultimately, you, like, again, back to the whole, there's a problem, I'm going to find a solution. That's mm. a, from, a, from a business point of view, mm. and people listening, what a great way of a, a business person to look at and go, mm. Look at, always looking at your business right, and yeah. how can I challenge that? How yeah. can I challenge what we're doing? To, exactly, if someone yeah. comes into the market and they're going to do something different than me, mm. then what would they do? And then, like you said, that yours only gets better and better. Then exactly, yeah. Which is it's a, always future-proofing and creating a ring of sort of almost IP around, mm. um, like your your cards up your sleeve. Once somebody does come out, think, oh, that's how we block them to market. Oh, here's our new feature that does that and better. Mm. Um, and like We've Dave got says, some really good. exciting stuff coming. Yeah. Oh man. T- tell me. Talk, talk to me. We can't. About we so. can't. can't. When does it go out? No. It's so. Talk, oh, it's right, so let's, good. Let's, let's, um, let's talk. What, what does then, f- from your point of view, talk to me? We mentioned a few challenges and stuff, but talk to me about what does success look like to you guys then? From as, as apart from as, the Lamborghinis. <laughs> <laughs> um, apart from the Lamborghinis. I think if you asked me that ten years ago, it would be Lamborghinis and you know, yachts and all that type of stuff. But I think for me now it is, it's like we've said it, it's, it's, seeing, it's seeing our product change the social fabric of gifting. Like seeing it, that's how people are gifting. Seeing it in the wild. Yeah, changing humanity for the better and seeing our product leading that race 
even if it then means you know other companies following our suit we're the, we're the number one company and then all the others are me too's that's what i would say is success you know standing at the till of costa and seeing someone grabbing a coffee and then sending a video message back thinking i did that <laughs> that's success for me i think yeah um, and i think company building mm. you know i've had some experience of building companies and some of the clubs that we were doing they got up to 60 odd head count it's quite a crazy thing to yeah. to try and control but i think there's an opportunity here to start a company that the output is so obviously good um that the culture you could build around this one would just be amazing you know you could build a really really great company that people would love to work for yeah. and i think that you know, you just like to have one of those brands where people go, oh, that's, you know, that's well, a that good is, one. Again, culture is something I always generally talk about here from a company point of view. But what you, I guess what you guys are doing and, and the culture that, that, that you're trying to create is not just within your company, mm. but that, that goes. The output. Across, yeah, the output exactly. For yeah. Everyone. And, yeah. And, it just be so, 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 so society to get involved. Yeah, in yeah. That, just um, a really big-hearted company, you know. And then we, we've obviously got some duties of care for our for our users. We get a lot of data, yeah. you know. Like as long as we're at the helm, that data is going to be safe, only ever be used to be useful. Yeah. So don't they don't need to sell this stuff. Like, yeah, and the companies that do debase people, and you'd be amazed. We can see it happening with Facebook, can't you? Just be yeah. amazed how quickly you can mess that one up, that relationship. Yeah. So, you know, we just will just in, we fully intend to just keep making this as useful as it, as it can be at the same time, protecting people from all of that nonsense. Mm. It's, it's time for technology to come out with a really good product that has really good, like as, as Ahmed always says, changes the social fabric for the better. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, we need to bake in to everything that the company does. And as long as we're still running it, then that yeah. would be. I think, yeah, trust it. I mean, we've. We've, yeah, we've been asked to do things. I think from brands and stuff. We said no, we're not. Yeah, cool already, with that. already people have like. And in previous yeah. businesses, we've been asked to do stuff that is, goes against what we're about, and we've yeah. we've turned those. Down. And I think for us as a core, that is key because we don't. You know, I wouldn't want my data or anything like that being used for anything but the good of myself. Um, yeah, you just don't want to be sold. <laughs> I don't want to be sold. No, this is goes so so far against what we're trying to do. Um, so yeah, so that is quite okay. key to the core. And I guess that, and again. It's back to your co- core values as, mm. as people align with. I spoke about this a few times recently about people's core values as a business that they align with their core values uh, as a person as well. And that is where, uh, on a personal level, where that true mm. happiness lies because mm. you're because things have changed so much now. It's not just that's work and then that's life. Mm that has an impact on that mm. so you want them to almost be intertwined and yeah. Yeah. So values have got to match Cause up yeah because there's part of the business that um sort of like the foundation oh like yeah on sort of there's breakage in our product so if somebody doesn't use a gift after like you know two years that money technically can go back to the brand um or back to the sender or back to the sender but what we're offering we want to create a present foundation where then we can harness that uh, that breakage and use it for good of society mm. um, start, yeah start some kind of yeah, foundation yeah which I think would be a beautiful thing to be, able to, to be able to give back through gifting and just say like, this is the present foundation this is what we've got today and yeah just do meaningful change through that as opposed to um, yeah pocketing it which we've seen, you know, in previous <laughs> businesses we've seen a lot of <laughs> yeah. and, so, and like you say it's, it's against our core values you know yeah. we're not greedy people um, obviously we're here to make money but we're here to do yeah. A business that actually does good for humanity and it's mm. not just a service of sorts do you know what i mean it's going mm. to actually do make people happy because you know there's a lot of things out there that you know the, yeah, yeah, yeah. why yeah, is the other way take, around take, take. you know why, why would you well, yeah, yeah. That, that's not a why that gets me out of bed so no. they, they that just i think people will just buy it up just listening to you both talk and the passion around it but that the whole for me is mind shift wise is all about the the kindness of people tapping into that and what that, 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 that is, I think that's such a powerful thing. And if 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 anything we've not learned from the last two years is that that's where life and where we need to be looking at going. And that's because it's not about like you said the material mm. thing in the Lamborghini and the pur- mm. but, but it's more about the purpose and that what you're creating. It doesn't have to be mm. 
the car that you're sending someone as a gift, mm. but you're buying someone a coffee, and that emotional value yeah. that that gives to someone is something mm. quite special. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I did did want to talk. Obviously, a few of the listeners obviously start off people looking to get. In. I did. I did want to tap into a little bit about obviously the, the the funding side of things and the investment journey that you guys have been on. Obviously, you had the sort of pre seed. I think was around. For I just wanted to delve into that a little bit if we can, just yeah. about the you know, where you are now and on the next process and what uh, some pain points around. Mm. What, what does it look like on the investment journey? Um, well, we've got previous fundraising experience, yeah, yeah. Um, so we sort of. We understood that coming into it. Um, We don't know. We're not experts. (laughs) But, yeah, um, yeah, there are elements that we had to. But we knew, like, you know, getting sort of SEIS status is is quite key. So anyone listening, that's one of your first port of calls. Um, Obviously, getting your financials bulletproof, um, even if they're forecast for three years, just really know your numbers so there's no ambiguity. Ambiguity. That's the one (laughs) Um, in that. Um, But, yeah, just really getting that pitch deck sort of sharp and knowing what the problem is how you're addressing it mm. and just yeah and never say there's no competitors because there always is yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and really just yeah finding out those and like i say find out the competitors and then really detail how you're going to do it differently um so we well, that was the storytelling yeah the storytelling and storytelling in the in the pitch deck is really important mm. but then that's something we are you know we are that part we really focus in on yeah. but we've been criticized at every single pitch mm. there's always been oh we couldn't see the vision and da, da, da. so people will throw all kinds of stuff back at you mm. um, so when you're going through that pitching process one thing I would say is keep your both ears open to all feedback mm. but definitely filter out anything you don't think is relevant to you yeah and but anytime someone says something that was actually right that one will kind of you know stick yeah, in you yeah. a bit yeah. That's mm. where you need to make your changes because everyone will tell you something different. Mm. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, and yeah, and you've got to reach out to so don't be you know don't reach out to five investors and they all say no and think oh I'll jack it in. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be too. You've got to honestly, be, it's going to be two hundred. You've got to hit. Wow. Yeah, that's a, t- that's a tough. I'm assuming that's quite a tough thing with the. the, the, the it's when you get yeah. Sometimes they don't even bother saying no. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes they yeah, say this yeah, is yeah. not for us. Blah, blah blah. And you can sort of be quite ah. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Blah blah. blah and get quite defensive. Yeah. But it's just yeah. It's just one wasn't for them. Um, and the investment world is riddled with VCs ignoring, you know, the likes of you know, Stripe or whoever and say, oh, we didn't invest them at day one. And you see these unicorns, multi-unicorns just coming out. And there's so many people that just didn't invest in them. So just, yeah, as long as you've got a passion and you know how you're going to do it, just keep sticking yeah. with it. And somebody will buy into that. And it's more about you as well, yeah. seeing that you've got that drive and understanding and insight that they don't have, but yeah. you've got the desire that no matter how many times you're going to get knocked down, you're going to see this through. And that's key to it. And if they see anything like, oh, after a couple of months, you know, I don't fancy it, they're not going to invest in you because they know yeah. you haven't got that drive. And I think that determination is also like 50% of the pitch. Yeah, sure, sure. It's you as a person. Why are you doing this? Why are you, you know, <laughs> why are you not making any money for a year? Why are you going to, you know, potentially sleep in your car? Why are you risking all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, that if comes across. When we talk to anyone about the project, mm. everyone says oh that's a really good idea i like that it's a really nice idea yeah. and they get it until you're sitting across the desk from someone who and you're asking them for money yeah. and then so many times they'll say i just don't get it and you're like but you're a smart guy yeah. <laughs> you're, a, you're a smart girl <laughs> like you're smart you know you're really you you've been you have you've got some serious business acumen what about this don't you understand yeah. like um, what have they? What feedback have you had? But like, they like, don't get it. Like, what the time is? Well, all sorts. We've had every, we've had every single every no you feedback can possibly you can imagine. imagine. Yeah, <laughs> every <laughs> kind of no, and really, really bizarre stuff as well. You know, like, um, yeah, just it's been done. We had someone yeah. throw it back at us. They're like, yeah, but I could just I could just go to a thing and send them a digital gift card. Yeah. It's like, well, how would they feel if you did that? They're going to be pleased with that. <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, it's a bit rubbish. It's like, oh, okay, so there's no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do yeah, I say yeah, to that? You've answered, yeah, yeah. you've answered your own question, but a lot, a lot of the times, there's quite a bit of ego in that in that money world. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can and imagine. and often people will be picking out reasons to say no, and putting that on your doorstep when in actual fact they're just they're just talking to themselves. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, e- yeah. Whatever <laughs> comes back at you, uh, you will know one that sticks in you because you're living it every day mm. and you're trying to get this baby born. You're trying to put as much detail into that plan as you can you'll know when someone says something and they're actually right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bit to incorporate and change what your story is slightly because yeah. that's the learning bit. 
but don't be worried about all of it. If yeah, because so, you, you've, most of it you've just got to believe in that story mm. right from the start of you said that the, the, the core of it, it's going to be, you'd like to think it's going to be rare that someone's going to say, oh, actually, we need to do something completely different. We're going to mm. change it. You, you, you ultimately believe in 100%. And like you said, I guess oh, what you're talking about with the determination side of stuff from investing, but ultimately as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, mm. to start out on that journey, whether you're going for investment or not, mm. you've got to have that belief in you, you and to, that yeah. passion and that drive and determination because there's you know you're going to get you need get, that to get through the tough times yeah yeah because if course. you don't have that well, we've had some shockers haven't we we've mm. had some some of the worst days but oh, yeah. what we've realized through both projects recent in this last sort of let's call it 10 years is weirdly the worst day is superseded by the best day in quite quick succession <laughs> yeah. and, a lot and you've got yeah so it's like that kind of like the the darkest hour just before dawn, dawn sort yeah. of thing and you just got to keep punching through it yeah, some days you just think oh I'm going to go to you know, <laughs> yeah, job yeah. centre tomorrow <laughs> yeah. but then you get an email or call you think oh but it is it's and it is yeah beachy head yeah just have <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just have your five minutes of you know self doubt and dust yourself off and go again and just learn by it I think that's the key but for us the investment yeah so we we reached out to several um, I think uh, this pre-seed round we reached out to maybe 10 VCs um, three of them were interested. The rest said, "No, it's not our portfolio. We don't have a fund open." Blah blah blah. Um, which sometimes is, yeah, we just don't want to do it. Um, but one of them really sort of saw our vision. Um, so yeah, we progressed with them. Um, we also got three other angels in on that round as well that shared our vision. Mm -hmm. So we raised just just under three hundred thousand um, on our SEIS uh, pot on that as well. Um, which was last sort of, was it last year? Hang on, all the years are the same. <laughs> yeah. now, it's all blended in. Think, over yeah, COVID. Yeah. When was the last time? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it was yeah, sort of spring time, early summer, twenty twenty one. So yeah. just over a year ago. Um, yeah. So that that process. Yeah. But that anyone listening, I think yeah, you've got to give yourself at least six months from that very first email to signing, you know, the term sheet and, and getting the money in the bank. It's at least six months. It's not an easy, and don't rely on that one. Yes. lead because at the 11th hour they can pull out <laughs> literally <laughs> um, so you just got to yeah have different options all the time yeah, yeah. until somebody puts a term sheet on your thing even the term sheet's not a guarantee yeah, yeah. so yeah just have all your money's in that bank exactly <laughs> so a, it's a nightmare basically yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> don't go into it faint hearted yeah. don't stop yeah and just make sure you know what the money's going to be used for because yeah. you don't want to under uh, fund yourself because yeah, that sure. puts yourself in the same place in another six months oh, we run out of money again yeah. but don't oversell your company from an early stage because it's quite easy to say okay I want 35% um, typically on each round you want to be giving away between you know, 5 to 10% I'd say in the early stages yeah, sure. no more than that and that sets a valuation and the one thing people always question on is the valuation yeah. investors always say well how do you value a company at you know, 50 million or so if your free revenue or yeah. your revenues are low if you're just a concept yeah. you're like well I'm, I don't want to give you <laughs> More it's not about young. the value it's yeah. how much yeah. I want to sell yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, that's and this yeah. is how much money I need yeah. so it's, it's bingo yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. how I value it <laughs> Go on. the early days is a by -pro the byproduct of yeah the valuation is a byproduct of how much you're willing to sell at that yeah, round yeah, sure. you don't want to give you control away and then because that will just bite you in the, the bum when you get down to yeah you know, if you can get to yeah, series A still you're going to end up nothing of your company yeah and it's still it's still that like you said it's your baby that you've created that you want to, mm. you know, that you're yeah. passionate about and you want to drive. Like you said, there's a back to the whole, it's not just about loads, making loads of money to buy me Lamborghini, yeah. it's about you've got a, pur a real purpose of why you want to try and do it. Because mm. ultimately, the if it's pu if it was purely mm. financially based, uh, I'm just getting it because I want to. I was just going to sell it to a company right now. Yeah, exactly that. Sell uh, tech. And, and you, yeah, you just wouldn't, you know, you mm. just haven't got that, that, like you said, when you hit the tough times that motivation's not there is it because it gets you know. yeah and if you end up only earning like 4% of your company you think oh what's the point yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got to have that sort of thing and you want the control yeah. you don't want too many well, voices you have to and that's the other thing you've got to make sure that each round if, if those if you go VC or PE or any of those you know really big ways of raising yeah. they're going to want their 10 to 20 percent each round you can easily give your company away if you get it wrong yeah. so I, it's more about valuing your time and saying you know, I want to keep control of my company yeah. and I'm I'm valuing my time, not just the company. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. choosing to do this instead of being with my with my boy. I could just me and him could just be down the beach every day. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. But I've got to provide, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, mm. So yeah, don't get don't oh, get pushed off 
off your off your line. I mean, a lot of it comes down to your projections. I know people don't like basing things on projection. Mm. Um, Every VC has a different sort of criteria as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a different way of looking at things. Um, but I would say trying to align yourself with the right investors, the right angel investors, investors yeah, or yeah, high net worths or angels or VCs, mm. that actually brings something extra to the table. Because our, our angels are fantastic. They've given yeah. us so much insight into other areas of the business that we don't have strong skill sets and they've opened yeah. a lot of doors and helped us. So having that network to just pick up the phone, that, you know, we're going to go out of business tomorrow, help me. Yeah. Um, and they can give you that advice and just, you know, take you through those tough times because they've been there and, and done it. Yeah, sure, um, sure. So having that network, you know, you want smart money, not dumb money. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, that actually brings value elsewhere. Because um, that's the self-awareness as well for you, you guys, because ultimately is business owners we've got to be able to go right well, okay I, I don't know everything about everything so uh, surrounding yourself with them people that can mm. go you know you've got to surround yourself with the smartest people, people and that's what we're doing at the moment we're building like a really it's not nice hard for us is it it's not <laughs> I mean yeah you just have to walk into it anyway <laughs> most, <laughs> most third really, person really. is a yeah <laughs> but yeah you, so yeah we're trying to build like a really stellar advisory board which we're really sort of yeah. getting to now when people see our our advisory board they're like oh okay mm. and that's 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 part of it I mean it takes a long while to get there um, yeah. you've got to do a lot of proof points but I think yeah people are now a high level buying into our vision um, and it helps that next round of investment potentially or it just helps you you know get to where you want to quicker yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah but it's not easy it's, it's um, yeah it might, it's had uh, no, uh, you know dabbled a little bit but not, not, not to obviously that degree but yeah I was just interested I know like, obviously reading the Forbes article and stuff like that beforehand mm. and just just interested in that world and because you know with, with tech and the way things are there'd be a lot of people sort of listening who looking at that type of thing and getting them investment rounds and, and wanting to start up and want to take this to the next level how do they do it so it's just mm. it, it just really interesting that, that world and seeing what that sort of yeah. looks like but um yeah, and if anyone wants to give us a shout, we can always yeah, yeah we're yeah, happy yeah. to yeah. give them some pointers awesome. or have a quick. And also, there's something to be said for scoping, um, making sure you create. If you're doing M- MV, if it is technology, mm. MVP, MMP, like actually try and cut down to what the minimum commercial That's proof is. Yeah. Focus on that commercial proof and get that metric. Yeah, even if it's just one. Yeah, it yeah. just prove you can move one dial. Yeah, sure. And um, and raise on that. The early rounds, that's kind of what they want to see is focus yeah. and move in one metric and you know proving you can deliver some technology. At every other round, you can base your success on fairly small scalable metrics. Yeah. As long as as long as the channels you have are scalable, yeah, yeah. the movement doesn't have to be huge. You know, it's just it's not, I, I, to have a group of yeah, people yeah. doing exactly what you want and show them how you track that down to that formula of getting those people to do that thing mm-hmm. and if that is what success is you've got that control of one dial that you'll you be alright yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome no, I appreciate that that's, that's, that's fascinating I mean look, I want to I want to I want to jump on a little bit now just again I know we sort of mentioned at the beginning something that like, a question I always ask purely from a, a personal point of view I guess is something I struggle with but with the whole you know you're going for investment manager you're obviously a tech startup you, you in the fives it got we talked about kids and family work life balance what does that look like for you two uh, does chaos <laughs> <laughs> do, you, um, do you achieve do you have a work life balance there do you add, um, about it? I mean I think yeah for me the, the, I think both of us our minds don't you, it's, you sort of when your eyes open in the morning you're thinking about ideas and stuff and then when you shut your eyes at night you're dreaming about them you're dreaming about them <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that do you feel that it's always been like that with you because of your creative you both obviously from a design perspective you've got them creative minds or is that as well just from the entrepreneurial side of you both that you've just ultimately I'm similar I guess, I guess I'm not as creative as you guys but just <laughs> a mindset wise mm. just uh, I guess constantly in my, because I love my yeah, business yeah. and you're into it and you just I think it's that yeah up. I think for me, creative, like my brain just automatically. He can't switch off. He'll be yeah. critique. We'll walk into the studio and he'll have a go on the handle. I've already had like, a these little lights. He's, like, <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, oh, well, that could be done better. Yeah. He's, he's like, Come out with a business idea. Just, just, use, business just better use, use the door. <laughs> yeah. Stop like reverse engineering the door. <laughs> you just got to, you know, get through it. But yeah, so that, that side of thing doesn't seem to switch off. It just, my brain just does it. And I'm like, okay, well done, brain. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah, like, yeah. 
for that. And I think you, yeah, and then you always constantly think about business sort of with brands and the commercialization of the company. So I think for both of us, it does, doesn't. If it wasn't this, it would be something else. There's no doubt. Else. My brain just is fast, like, it, you know, the hamsters always bang at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but work life balance, I try and demark my time obviously we were able to be a bit flexible yeah, and if we need to put in 16 hour day you put in a 16 hour day yeah, yeah. Um, I try and remember that you know my, my boy's only going to be this age once so mm. you know we I actually did stick to those nursery pickups and all that stuff yeah, yeah. Um, but you just have to put in a bit more time once he's gone to bed yeah, yeah, it goes yeah. quick as well yeah, like you said my daughter's seven and then my son's four yeah, yeah. and I missed out doing a lot with him because of covid like taking him you know to the zoo or whatever because you know you're locked down for literally nearly a year and a half yeah. um so it's difficult to try and you know, get that special time so i've really sort of thought about okay i've really got to make time for the family because yeah, yeah. yeah my wife bless her she's put up with a lot of <laughs> me moping around <laughs> and just not seeing me and it's, i think yeah it's between that and liverpool between that and liverpool yeah there's a well it's been <laughs> right but yeah not this week for the champions league but um yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no so yeah trying to get that balance and i i think for me i can be seen as a nightmare by family members um <laughs> but i think it's just the passion so i've really tried to work on that especially the last six months or so yeah, yeah. um it's no good just saying oh i'm doing it for us um yeah. it's got to be is, which is obviously but it's there's, yeah there's but it's got to be there. i can't yeah i can't take i take home the good days and i share that yeah. but then i do take home the bad days and yeah. i share that as well and i don't think that's fair on them um and yeah I'm trying to really work that, on that. I'm, I'm interested because th- do you think because although like, showing them that like, even with kids and stuff as well or at a young age showing them that there is I've had a bad day and, mm. and being able to communicate with them I don't I don't mm. necessarily but say that's ter- a terrible thing to be able to do like mm. daddy's had a bad day at work this happened for whatever reason yeah, yeah. blah 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 I deal with you, it, know, yeah. at, you know I know they're young and the same mm. like mine similar age you, I, I, I'm conscious of it and I worry about it always want them to see me daddy's at me he's all, yeah, right, yeah. all the time but trying to show them vulnerabilities I suppose is not mm. a necessarily a terrible thing but mm. it's um, it's, it is like you say it's that that difficulty of being present I guess the the ultimate thing is being trying to be present in that moment which yeah. is difficult when your brains pardon work the as they do yeah mm. pardon the pun <laughs> chuck it there now, just yeah. it there. but, but it's, it is within that moment and when you're I'm, I'm conscious of going when I'm with the kids, I want to try and be with them. 100%. Yeah. It's hard because your brain is. You're thinking off, about it, yeah. You, you can't help that, can't help how, how we are. But yeah. The one thing I've sort of really tried, yeah, is for me at home, put my phone away. Because yeah. it's such a little nightmare, yeah. Emails and ideas yeah. and things like that and customer support, it's, it's always on the go. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, so I literally, now literally the phone goes on the sh- shelf on the hallway stairs. So it's right out of yeah, <laughs> any yeah, convenient yeah. grabbing yeah. point. And then until I put the kids to bed. Yeah, nice. then I might pick it back up and then yeah I think I worry that the business will collapse if I don't respond to it between the hours of like 9pm and you know 7am yeah, yeah, yeah. I think well, no, I wake up in the morning it's still going to be there yeah. and I think yeah that's that's the one thing I've really worked on yeah. Um, so yeah I'm more up for this sort of sharing how we really feel side of things yeah, yeah. exposing Boland to a little bit of what's really happening in my life yeah, yeah. at the same time as trying to be present for him yeah, 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 yeah. so I think uh, yeah that's something I y- you learn both positive and um, negative ways of parenting from your parents and your family don't yeah, you yeah, yeah, cool. and you do sit back as a kid and observe some stuff and like so, uh, mm. <laughs> Yeah, 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 even yeah. at that age, I was like, oh, I'm not sure that's particularly <laughs> good. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put that in place with him. And a lot of that is about being really authentic with him, uh, showing him how to manage his emotions. But also, I want him to carry on sharing yeah. stuff with me. And I think that comes from that, that blueprint. Um, if I've had a bad day, I would probably, would probably tell him. I think too many times people stiff up a lip stuff and compartmentalise away from their kids. Yeah. They're not stupid. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're, they're at you, aren't they? Yeah. Anyone who's got kids saying, mm. you know, from about six months old, they've sussed you right yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can't so even talk yet. They're, they're, got they're you, my biggest teachers. Yeah, they've got you <laughs> wrapped around their finger. So, you know, that doesn't stop. And yeah. they know when you're there and when you're not there. So yeah. it's better to communicate what's going on, I think. But yeah. also practice trying to pull your head out of work yeah. mm. and separate yeah, yeah. I think oh, maybe a bit of breathing, you know, like I'm not one to meditate, but I definitely like to keep an eye on my breath. I was told at some point 
another stressful point in my life uh, by a doctor, you know, like through six months of tests. And they're like, someone just said, the whole time you've told me this backstory, you've held your breath. And I was like, have I? And then as soon as they said it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's why I'm feeling dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my brain. I've been, I've been holding my breath. So, yeah, I, yeah, I try and keep breathing. And that whole simple thing of just going back to nose breath thing, that gets you through an know, awful lot. That, and it's not, that's not yeah. hard. You know, everyone can do that. And mm. that's a good way of bringing yourself back round. Yeah, Honour it. Yeah, say it in your it's, head. It's a practice thing, isn't it? I, mm. I, I, I don't do it. I've never meditated enough. But people say, oh, you should meditate for breathing. Mm. Just because at any time I sit still, my brain goes yeah, yeah. off one. So I just go, oh, I can't. But it's practice. Everyone that I've spoken to about it that does do it and embraces it. It's, just, mm. it's a learning curve, isn't it? It's a whole learning curve. Mm. It's, it's interesting. It's great to talk to because some people come on, I feel like, oh, I'll wait. But we are in a similar boat. We all have our brains are like that. They're just wired that way. It's just we do the best we can, what we got. At the, mm. no. You no, make better, you think you do make better decisions especially if you've got yourself to that point where mm. there probably is no 100% right way mm-hmm. there just needs to be a decision made and sometimes those things are better to come oh, it sounds like I'm a total hippie yeah. but these things are better to come slightly from the subconscious or somewhere yeah, else yeah, yeah, yeah. so like breathing and yeah. letting that you know just taking your head out of that one because yeah, yeah. um, it's not good it's not good for you yeah, yeah. and uh, life is just getting more and more stress more and more stressful yeah, for yeah. everyone yeah yeah but they can give a, give a gift and then they make people exactly. happy. There, there you go. go. Or well, you can just it. use present. Don't yeah. use it. Talk to me. We're coming towards the end. Talk to me about what, what does the future hold for present then? Wow. Oh, what doesn't it hold? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I think, yeah, like we said, our ultimate goal is to be one of the main ways that we gift yeah. as a society. That's the goal. That's the mission. Um, from a business perspective, yeah, we're lining up. Um, our next rounds of funding um, we're doing a round at the moment which we're sort of halfway through um, for a few hundred um, and so we should close that end of June 22 and then we're going to well we've got the ear of a couple of uh, very big VCs yeah. that we've been speaking to the last yeah six months eight months um, this round's too small for them <laughs> yeah so we said well you know, how many zeros do you need so they're talking about okay right so they've told us what to focus on so I think for us we'll go for a series A or a larger fund yeah. raise I don't know end of this year or potentially next year it's probably be um, we've kind of been told what they need to see which mm. is you know I don't know if that's always the right way but we've played it with an open book yeah. just said look this is what we've got this is where we're at how much more of what do you need yeah. um, obviously the feedback from them is you know focus on hard truths um, make that you know you're, there is an e-commerce as- aspect to this so make yeah. that financial make it about you know strictly look at your churn put your churn down to anyone who hasn't used it after two months yeah. it's quite savage what they're asking yeah, for yeah, and yeah. it's and I would say fairly out it's, it's very risk adverse and a little it's a bit of a shame that, it, that the, the, the whole everything we talked about at the beginning of this is being now focused down onto hard commercial truths rather yeah, than yeah. connections or you know how how viral the app could be um but getting surely that's got to be the still it is the driver it's the driver no of course it is but for, but they just they, to look at the risk is you know the the, the appetite's changing in town yeah uh, sure well i'm not saying town in the global yeah. market um so you know people will be looking to de-risk stuff and looking for to sift out between things that you know have got great potential from yeah. things that are actually solid yeah. and um, are making money. Um, I think that the the days of you know another get here or delivery service being valued very quickly at astronomical money is probably going to get less likely, yeah. and they're going to go to places that you know going to want to pump more money with big safe bets. Yeah. So if you're coming in as a radical thing, that's almost like, like us is a bit of an un. Uh, undone and uh, not not been done yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, you know uh, something that's just a bit left field they're going to want to sense check that with mm. with hard truths yeah sure um that's but, okay so mm. a raise is something and then we've got like a nice yeah roadmap of features that we're oh, the keen to start yeah. uh putting out there but you have to wait and see you have to download the app now <laughs> yeah, I've got it um, don't worry I'm excited some, yeah. to see the new, uh, the, yeah. new the new app's quite cool because if you download it in the next couple of weeks um, so we're what May yeah. now um, you'll have four free gifts to send to friends all on us so yeah to build out your tribe and send some love 
Um, so that's one new feature, but we've got lots more coming. Um, we're looking, yeah, to scale up numbers, potentially switch on the international sending. So if you've got family abroad, you know, you can send them a gift from wow. cross border. Sort of, yeah, um, so we want to look at the geo location of things. Um, there's loads I could say, but yeah. yeah. Just awesome. You just have to download them. Down and download see what the app, everyone. Exactly. That's what you got to do. Yeah, uh, check it out. I mean, it's, it's, nice, it's a nice little thing to click around. It's, mm. it's also, like, like I said, I've used it. I've, I've received the gift. I've mm. sent a gift. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's an amazing, amazing app. I, we, honestly, I love it. Thank and like, you. like I said, the fir- first time we met at, at, mm. at, at the awards, you tell me about it. I think I da- we yeah, sit next to each other. I downloaded it. It's awesome. So, yeah, mate. Both of you, honestly, it's, it's, it's an amazing Thank thing you. you've done. And I've, I, 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 ultimately, for me, I love the message behind it. What it's, back, it's just, for me, tapping into people's kindness and that, and sharing that love mm. and being able to connect through that is it's a powerful message, I think, that you're trying to... It's a big uh, one as well, because yeah. it's very, very macro. People ask you for your big vision, you know, you know, want to see your big vision. I mean, this is a product for everyone with a smartphone. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty big, isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and everyone gifts... Uh, so you know, this is something we're ongoing talking to our our kind of panel of uh, advisors, and you know, in the mix is is like Rory, who is the ad man. You know, he's yeah. like as big as it gets in advertising yeah, in yeah. the UK, and talking to him about what this is and how to communicate what this is is like fascinating, and um, yeah. yeah, it's pretty, it's cool. Good times, awesome. Right, well look. It's been great having a chat with you. Thanks for coming. Up. We're going to finish just with a couple of quick fire questions. First one: What would uh, one piece of advice you'd give to your eighteen-year-old selves? Cool. Um, I think maybe be more confident. Like I said, when I was young, I was very optimistic and glass, you know, for when. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I'd always say stuff and like be a bit of a dreamer. Why isn't this stuff? And a lot of my friends in my cohort would just say would bring me down a peg and yeah. it wasn't until I realized actually they're just not creative and they didn't allow and that, that was part of my sort of uh, going into sort of business as opposed to design yeah. um, I'd just be, be more confident and tell them that they're wrong they don't know what they're doing <laughs> and I create the world around them so just leave it to me <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very, what very I'm humble <laughs> I'm very humble in that respect yeah, I, just, I think I just say you're enough you are enough as you are yeah. and it's all there Awesome. And buy Microsoft shares. Buy Microsoft shares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get yeah. in early. <laughs> um, oh, it's an awesome. Like, like I said, if it's a uh, tradition we sort of done with a previous guest, we'll leave a question. I did take it from Stephen Bartlett, which I always mention. Right. I'll give him a shout out. But listen, this is quite a good one because I've wanted to and I'll maybe manipulate it slightly. But <laughs> so, if you could give one gift to someone, what mm. would it be? Oh. That's a really good question. Um, I don't think it would be a physical gift, but I think it would be, like we say, the moment to have with someone, which is especially after two years, pretty much, not seeing anyone. I think bringing two people together with something, just, you know, here's two cups of coffee, meet up. I think that's pretty powerful. Because, you know, over the weekend, I met um, my wife's family. We haven't seen each other for, like, two and a half years. Literally, the whole family got together for the first time. And that was, like, crazy, that that amount of time yeah, had passed cool. and that was the reason that was brought together was through a birthday and people you know giving gifts on that day yeah. and so I would yeah give someone that time with someone yeah here's a meal for two that yeah. go and have that and just yeah and that's what it's all about oh, gentlemen what a lovely way to finish and that as they say is a wrap and I listen wish you every success for thank you Sam it's been awesome we'll thanks back. thank thanks you so much for having us on. really oh, lovely mate, to see it's, been, it's been great both of you so thank you very much and uh, get out there and uh, give, get, well, give some presents we'll do it